welcome back once again from the 911. All the Porsches I've owned over the years, I've always enjoyed driving them so much that I try to find reasons why I need to go out and go for a drive. While the Ferrari was just parked there and I didn't really feel the urge to go out and drive, I used to just take it out because I thought it needs to be driven. I know I'm bashing the poor Ferrari a lot, but it's such a stark difference between owning that and this. Someone messaged me and asked to talk about the Aston Martin that I owned and compare that to the 911. I'm afraid it's very difficult to compare a 6 litre V12 state-of-the-art beautiful car that's hand-built in England with love and care and it looks beautiful and amazing and everything is perfect to a mass-produced um, Porsche. Well, this is something that this mass-produced car does. <laughs> And it's amazing. But if you watch my Aston Martin videos, you'll see that I enjoyed every single moment I had in that car. And it had the same torque and power because uh, the 6 litre V12 just is one of the best engines that I think Aston Martin have made. And it just propelled the car from zero to 60 in four seconds or under four seconds and it was a an over two ton Aston Martin repeat s it was 550 brake horsepower this is 450 so compared to this I guess I haven't calculated but the power to weight ratio would mean that that car and this car are the same the chassis on that Aston was so firm and so rigid that you never felt any flex or any movement in the car. Uh, it was very comfortable, but it was really amazing. I threw that car around corners in the Alps and in those windy roads in the south of France. I never felt scared. Even in the Black Forest when I was going down, downhill like really fast, my friend was sitting next to me with the camera going like that while I didn't feel scared. It was like I was driving a four-wheel drive car, even though it was a rear wheel. That car, the transaxle, the f weight distribution was just perfect. The other thing is the leather, everything that you touched inside felt really plush and beautiful. It didn't feel cheap in any way. The only thing it lacked was an Apple CarPlay because I'm such a technology geek everything I have is Apple and it's all linked and connected and my whole life is run through my calendars and my music and my phone and everything so not having Apple CarPlay was a bit of a pain but other than that that car was immaculate the Bang & Olufsen sound system wasn't the Harman Kardon version of Bang & Olufsen because some of you may know that Harman Kardon bought the car division of Bang & Olufsen. So most of the cars like the Audis that say it's Bang & Olufsen is actually Harman Kardon. It's not real Bang & Olufsen but at the time when the Astons were made uh, Bang & Olufsen owned uh, the car division and that £5,000 option was worth every single penny because when you sat in that car and you rolled up the windows, switched off the exhaust and listen to the music it was being in like in a concert hall amazing but it's a completely different car to a 911 911 is really short and small and like short wheelbase and uh, it's very nippy and you can throw it around corners and you don't look like a douchebag doing it whereas if you were doing that in an Aston Martin I think people would think you're a douchebag because you bought an Aston Martin you're driving it like you're a race car driver or one of those joy riders. So yeah, the Aston was an amazing beauty. 
very very expensive to run and maintain but I haven't started paying for the maintenance on this so I don't know Porsches are not cheap but uh, the Aston was another level because um, I think I replaced the brake pads and that was a thousand pounds to just replace the brake pads it wasn't uh, including the discs and it only included I think the front and the rear but not the brake, the parking brake pads, which were another, I think, four or five hundred pounds separate, but they didn't need to be replaced. What else? Most of the other... It didn't need any other things, so I don't know what the cost would have been. Uh, the service, I had it serviced, that was a thousand pounds. So it, it almost felt like everything you wanted to do cost a thousand pounds. Yeah, but it was... If you, if you have the money to afford and run an Aston Martin, you shouldn't be complaining about those maintenance costs, well, maintenance costs and other things. Fuel-wise, that car, 6-litre V12, was so efficient. I drove it all around Europe and I would drive it all over London. It did the same as the Audi does. So the Audi RS4 I have, the fuel consumption on that 3-litre uh, V6, is the same as the 6 litre V12 and this 911 I have to say is better than the Audi in terms of the fuel consumption or maybe I haven't really measured it but when you fill the tank it seems to run for longer but I don't know I've only had it for a short time so uh, I managed to replace the badge on the back bumper so I removed the C4S, the whole writing on the back because it looked a bit too much in your face like I'm telling you what I have. And I just replaced it with a 911 badge, which I was very surprised actually. I looked it up on the internet to see how much it was and various websites and companies were selling it for about 95 pounds. And I thought it's expensive, but it's a Porsche badge. And I thought it would be more expensive if I buy it directly from Porsche. So I rang Porsche Centre East London just to check. And it was £50. So cheaper than the third party suppliers. So I bought it. And uh, it wasn't as easy to replace it as I thought. I used a dental floss. Wore some gloves. Put the dental floss on my fingers. And I cut through the old uh, sticker that was on the back of the, the badge and uh, then I cleaned the surface really well as best as I could um, with various tar removers and things that can remove all kinds of grease and then the, the new sticker came or the new badge came with the sticker on the back so I put some masking tape and then measured all the sides it was really difficult because you could see where it needs to be but you're not sure whether that's where Porsche wanted it to be so I had to just make a wild guess and do it, but it looks very nice. I'm very happy. I told one of my friends that I want to remove the badge and he was like, oh, don't do that because it will look like a basic 911. And I was like, so what? It's, it's funny how different people perceive different things. For me, I don't care what anyone thinks I own because it's not for other people, it's for me. So if someone thinks it's a base level, entry level 911, then that's better. I'd rather people not know. So once he told me that, or said that to me, I was actually even more convinced I needed to remove the badge and just put a simple 911. So I'm very happy with that. What's also very interesting is uh, the amount of feedback I have received from you guys on this car and getting back into the Porsche is very very impressive and very it makes me very happy that I made the right decision everyone is really happy that I have a 911 again and uh, the number of views that I received uh, on my 911 video also shows that people are more interested in 911s than the other cars um, yeah, I mean, I don't make videos for views, but 
it's encouraging because when you put so much effort in filming and editing and all that and then you get 10 views it's depressing to see that no one cares and watches your stuff so I was pleased now I'm about I think 4870 something subscribers right now so I would really appreciate if you watch this video to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed because I want to get over the 5,000 viewers mark or subscriber mark because it will mean another milestone maybe then 10,000 and when I look at other people's videos it's just so depressing that they get like 50 60,000 views on one video and my little poor channel gets nothing but I guess I didn't start off this video to get subscribers or viewers it was just as a hobby and fun but I'm also quite competitive so as much as I keep trying to tell myself don't think about it don't think about it it, it does kind of like bother me inside that my videos aren't getting as many views as others but yeah I guess my video quality and the content isn't at the same level as the others but there's one guy that I would highly recommend that you guys go and subscribe to his channel and watch it his channel is called Misha on wheels uh, Misha is M-I-S-H-A on wheels the quality of his videos is astronomically good better than any other channel that I watch and it's quite annoying to see that all those other channels have 100,000, 150,000 subscribers and he doesn't because his channel is superb. He makes a lot of effort in making the videos and there are several cameras and drones and things and also his videos are very funny. They have a good sense of humor and good wit in it. Um, they're not just boring videos talking about just the specs of the car because once you've seen three videos about a car on YouTube they all seem to blend into one everyone is talking about the same thing but his videos are really extraordinary so if you like car videos please do go and subscribe um, I met him once in Monaco where he arranged um, um, a car like a drive with other car enthusiasts and I didn't really get to talk to him because there were so many people and it just seems a bit odd saying yeah I'm a youtuber and I follow you and I'm gonna come and now talk to you because so I didn't really but I don't know whether he's a nice friendly person in real life or not but his videos are amazing Seb Delaney on the other hand the other guy from Monaco he's very friendly I met him the day before I met Misha in Monaco as well and he was really nice he knows how to uh, deal with fans and people who watch his channel so it was very interesting he knew just how to be sociable and pleasant uh, with strangers so that's an art I've had a couple of people come up and talk to me and it's a bit unnerving because people come up and say hey Ethan and you just think oh my god how does this person know me and have I forgotten who they are and then they say oh I watch your channel and it's really nice and then you think okay thank god this wasn't uh, some stalker or some weird person although I got one I wouldn't say stalker but a strange person who oh I should cut this out not mention this